Hey guys, welcome back to Zenworks channel. Today we are back with another HLMS episode again. This episode is Strike Gundam from Gundam Seed. This topic will be divided into two episodes because Strike got a long history and is extremely confusing. So this part one will only contain Seed history and excluding the Destiny part. Well, I will include some Destiny parts if I need to. Anyway, you finished the terms and conditions, so turn on your CC sub, grab some snacks, and enjoy the video. Strike Gundam is one of the Gundams developed under G Project. Due to its complexity, Strike was the last Gundam to be completed. If you forgot what is G Project, you can go back to Ju Gundam's episode to do a quick revision. Just like Ju and Buster Gundam, Strike Gundam belonged to X100 series, but compared to the other two Gundams, Strike Gundam got a better overall development. As I said before, each GATX unit were developed based on a special concept, but Strike Gundam was different than others. It was developed to be versatile and able to adapt the battlefield quickly. First, the Sportiness was the best out of the five Gundams, Strike Gundam was able to replicate human-like movements precisely. However, this also means the repair works were harder and the parts will wear out a lot quicker. All the units in G Project featured PS armor when activated. Strike Gundam will change from grey to white scheme with a bit of blue and red mixed in. For basic armaments, 75mm Seaweeds, 57mm High Energy Beam Rival, Shield, Bazooka, and Armor Schneider Combat Knife in the side skirts. So, how versatile and effective Strike Gundam really is? Thanks to the Striker Packs, Strike Gundam was able to adapt the battlefields quickly by switching the backpack. There are 7 packs in total. The original 3 backpacks are L, Sword, and Launcher. The MSV or remastered versions include Perfect, Lightning, Gun Barrel, and IWSP. Let's explain the packs one by one, starting with the iconic L Striker. The L Striker is formed by two beam sabers on the top, a pair of movable wings, four powerful vernier thrusters, and a battery pack. L Striker is the most commonly equipped striker pack due to its mobility, speed, and flexibility. In space, L Strike got excellent speed, mobility, and direction changing. On Earth, it cannot perform a long flight, but gliding for a short period is possible. L Striker also increased the jumping ability and allowed the L Strike Gundam to jump higher and glide longer. Despite this pack focused on the mobility and speed, but during early stages of the war, L Strike Gundam is definitely a nightmare to Zaf soldiers. A high speed MS charging with a beam saber or beam rifle towards you, that's scary. The L Strike created a lot of shocking results, such as surviving multiple battles against the Crew Z team, damaging the Ju Gundam and left a scar on Izak's face, destroyed a bunch of Bakus and shot down a Lago, which was piloted by Desert Tiger, Andrew Watfield himself. L Strike also protected the Art Angel multiple times near or in orb. Without Strike Gundam, Art Angel would definitely sink in the first couple episodes. After the crew left orb, our Angel crew engaged the Zala team again. Kira single-handedly knocked out Dew, Buster, and Blitz. In the second half of the battle, Kira and Afran was fighting to the death. Afran did the 2 AX7 and Strike Gundam was detonated right in the face, but Kira was still alive. After Strike Gundam was repaired by Monogonate, it was handed to Mula Flaga. During second battle of Yakin Due, El Strike was seriously damaged by Providence Gundam and forced to retreat. Dominion fired Loengli, Positron Blaster Cannon, and Mu used the El Strike as a shield and protected the Art Angel. L Strike was destroyed and Mu died for the original version. In the remastered version, the helmet was removed and foreshadowing to Mu survived the blast, which is kind of BS considering he turned into a scumbag in Destiny. The second striker pack is called Soul Striker, just like the name suggests, is for close quarter combats. This striker pack is ideal for close combats, colony battles, and aquatic combats. Out of all the striker packs, this pack got the highest combat endurance because its energy consumption is the lowest. The most iconic weapon on this this pack is the Swag Gewehr 15.78 meter anti ship sword. This sword is almost as tall as the Strike Gundam. It's a large physical sword with beam blades on the cutting edge, capable of slicing the MS in half easily or doing tremendous damage to a battleship. At the bottom end of the sword, it would generate a short beam blade, but it was never shown in the anime. As I said in the Buster episode, the bottom end was supposed to be a beam gun. But the Swerk Gewehr on Soul Striker is a prototype, so it got short beam blade instead. Not only the sword is capable of slicing MS or battleships, it can still cut the enemies underwater thanks to the sharp tip. On the left forearm, it got Panzer Eisen Rocket Anchor. This is a rocket-propelled anchor that got a claw at the front. 
It can be used to crush or capture the enemy. It will be attached on the cable and launched to the enemy. The whole anchor can also function as a shield because it got anti-beam coating. Another additional detail, this weapon can also use during aquatic battle too. On the left shoulder, this is the Midas Messer Beam Boomerang, a throwing weapon that emits a short beam blade on one end. This weapon seems very weak but it often caught enemies by surprises. Even one of the Zav Aces died because of this boomerang. By the way, this is the only weapon on Soul Striker that cannot use underwater. The Soul Striker was rarely used by Kira, but it got some scary results. First, Kira used the boomerang and caught Miguel Amon by surprise. Then he proceeds to destroy his Jin, and Kira took down one of the Zav Aces. During Artemis' battle, Kira used the Soul Striker and successfully held Blitz Gundam off. After Art Angel escaped from the desert, Soul Striker once again protected the Art Angel and shot down Marco Morosim and his Zono. The biggest achievement of Soul Strike Gundam is destroying Blitz Gundam. Them. Nico was trying to protect Afran and ran into the anti ship sword. Resulting, the sword directly cut into the Blitz cockpit and Nico went KIA. The first striker pack is Launcher Striker, specifically designed for long range supports, similar to Buster Gundam's concept. This pack has zero close combat weapons, it's bulky and slow, definitely not suitable for close to mid range battles. Its role will be suppressing enemies' fleet base and MF's teams by its insane firepower. On the left side of the pack, you will see Acne 320mm Hyper Impulse Cannon. It will generate highly compressed critical plasma energy in the order of microsecond bursts, impulses and fires them. This cannon is 20 meters long and one of the most powerful beam weapons at its introduction. It's powerful enough to completely melt away a MS or blow a hole on the colony's wall. The launcher strike got an extra arm unit to support the weight and stabilize the fire process, but with great power comes great energy consumption. This weapon will drain the battery quickly if you fire it randomly, around 10 shots, and the battery will be completely emptied. Luckily, the cannon can charge from the battleship's power through a cable, turning Launcher Strike into a powerful fort. On the right shoulder, it got a combo weapon pod. It's formed by a 120mm anti-ship Falcon gun and two 350mm gun launchers. Since the Launcher Striker have no close range weapons, so when the enemy gets close, this weapon pod is the only option to defend itself. The 120mm anti-ship Falcon gun can fire with the 75mm Seaweeds at the same time creating a strong barrage during MS, anti-ship, or vehicle combats. The gun launcher can fit different types of projectiles depending on the situation, but the launcher was never used correctly in the anime. During the launcher strike first appearance, Kira used the Acne Melted Cruzet's Siku's right arm and forced him to retreat. But Kira also blew a hole on Heliopolis' wall. Later, L Strike was powered down after a tough fight and cornered by Cruzet team. Mu used his Mobius Zero and stalling time for Art Angel to prepare the Launcher Striker. Before Izak used the Grenade Launcher to destroy Strike Gundam. The Launcher Striker was equipped right on time and Kira used Agni to create a barrage and force the Cruzet team to retreat. After Art Angel landed on Earth, they were surrounded by a group of Bakus. Launcher Strike was in trouble during first half of the battle, but Kira quickly fixed the OS to adapt Desert Battlefield. Then, he shot down two Bakus and saved Art Angel from Lasip's main cannon. But Kira used Acne too many times and Launcher Strike was about to power down. He was saved by Desert Dawn members and lured the Bakus into their trap and blew them all high. After Art Angel left Orb, Launcher Strike was drawing energy from the ship through a cable and breaking the Zala team's formation. Then, Kira switched to other striker packs and fought them. The last time striker pack appeared was in Mendel Colony. Mu was facing against Cruzet and his new gaze. Due to the launcher strike's poor mobility and outdated abilities, Cruzet used his gaze and shot down launcher strike. The fourth striker pack is called Perfect or Multiple Assault Striker. To put it in a simpler way, adding all L, Sword, and Launcher Striker onto the Strike Gundam. This pack seems very powerful because all the features from the free strikers were put together. But is it true? Let's find out. If Perfect Striker was still using the standard Strike Gundam's battery, then it will probably power down after launching for like 5 minutes. To solve the scary energy consumptions, the developers added 4 extra batteries on the L Striker. After each of them were emptied, it would just be purged from the Striker pack. 
Secondly, the developers have to reduce all the output of the weapons to maintain a stable operation time. Thirdly, the thrusters on the Air Striker can no longer support the heavy weight. It can barely perform a normal flight. Lastly, with all the equipment on the P-Strike, it became really complicated to pilot it which was why Kira didn't recommend this striker pack when Strike Gundam was handed to Mu. For actual performance, we just learned that it didn't perform well with all those issues, which was why this pack was only used once. It was seen during the defense battle of Orb. The P-Strike destroyed a lot of strike daggers and briefly fought against the Calamity Gundam. The fifth striker pack is called Integrated Weapon Striker Pack, short form as IWSP. This backpack is developed by PMP Company and it was intended to be the fourth backpack for Strike Gundam. The concept of this pack is to combine all the features on L, Sword, and Launcher Striker into one backpack to save time on the battlefield, so Strike Gundam won't need to switch backpack during mid battle. IWSP also got a better battery with more capacity, which allows Strike Gundam to operate longer with this pack. But PMP couldn't solve the battery problem, so the development was stopped. Despite the pack is powerful, versatile, and able to use in any environment, but it got a lot of problems. First, the analysis showed the developers that IWSP is very hard to use, even for ace pilots. The structure is complicated and another serious problem appeared. If Strike Gundam used the IWSP for a long time, it's very likely that the upper body frame and the left arm that mounts the combined shield will distort, and having a serious deteriorating balance problem. But let's take a look at the weapons before moving on to the next striker. A pair of 105mm cannon is at the front, a pair of 115mm railgun that can rapidly fire with excellent accuracy, a pair of 9.1m anti-ship sword mounted at the bottom, and a combined shield with 30mm 6-barrel gatling machine gun, Midas Mesa beam boomerang and a shield piece. The sixth striker is called Gun Barrel Striker. Using the Mobius Zero as the base and specifically designed for pilots with high spatial awareness. For example, Mula Flaga and Morgan Chevalier. Different than the rest of the striker packs, the connector is different, which means this pack cannot be attached to Cosmo Graspa or Sky Graspa. At the front of the striker, you will see a cockpit. This is the only striker that requires a pilot to deliver into the battlefield. When Gun Barrel Striker is equipped on the back, the nose will rotate to the back, then detach the cockpit. Cockpit. And now is the Gun Barrel Strike Gundam. The Gun Barrel Strike got four wire guided Gun Barrel Pots. They can be used as boosters to increase speed or detach and control through wires to attack from all directions. Each pot contained one GAU 758S railgun and two M70AM SAT missiles. If controlled correctly, the four pots will add a lot of pressure on the enemy and form a strong barrage. The only downside is this weapon requires pilots with high spatial awareness. On the bottom of the striker, another M58E4 Gatling gun can be spotted. This weapon was equipped to prevent weaponless situation if all the gun barrel pots were destroyed. Also served as a self-defense weapon. The Gun Barrel Striker was originally assigned to Mula Flaga, but after he joined the Art Angel faction during Operation Speed Break, Earth Alliance cancelled the plan but later they found another pilot with high spatial awareness, which is Morgan. The Gun Barrel Striker was equipped on his dagger, and that's the only confirmed MS with this striker at the moment. The last striker is Lightning Striker. OMNI Enforcer contacted the IDEX Corporation to develop a striker pack that can extend Strike Gundam's operation time by 100 150%. However, IDEX failed to develop because a lot of problems kept coming out. First, the pack required a new battery, so the size was increased, to withstand the increased weight. The thruster output had to be increased, which generated more waste heat. So it required a cooling system to handle the heat, and it further increased the weight. Since this endless vicious loop cannot be stopped, IDEX shut down the whole development. Later, the development was passed to Orb, which they successfully developed high-capacity batteries and high-performance miniaturized cooling system. Orb made a prototype and it was assembled within the Kasanagi after it escaped from Orb, and it was equipped onto the Strike Gundam. The only weapon on Lightning Strike is Type 70-31 Electromagnetic Cannon. It's an improved model from Type 70 with combined compactness with high firepower. Usually, it's 
two separate halves stored under the forearms and combines together when in use. The shooting range is crazy too. In the original settings, 120km on Earth and 10,000km in space. However, in the recent Metal Build settings, the sniping range is 380,000km in space. The more ridiculous part is Mu hit two retreating gins from 380,000km away. Like, who wrote that? Okay, back to the history. After Kusanagi went to space, Mu launched with the lightning strike for testing purpose. Unfortunately, the testing was stopped due to an unexpected accident which resulted the lightning striker was destroyed. In CE-73, lightning striker was repaired and put onto a slaughter dagger, right before it attempts to sink the Martian's ship, Axadalium, with the electromagnetic cannon. Isaac Mao came out with his Kerberos Baku Hound and destroyed the slaughter dagger, resulting the Lightning Striker was completely destroyed. After Strike Gundam was wrecked by Aegis Gundam's 2 AX7, Orb retrieved the wreckage and began the repairment. During the process, Orb successfully obtained the Strike Gundam's data and PS Armor's secret. So, they made a lot of spare parts for the original Strike Gundam and enough for another unit. The result is Strike Rouge. Strike Rouge shared the exact same structure and appearance like Strike Gundam, but the difference is focused on the technologies. First, it was equipped with Power Extender, which extended the operation time and able to improve energy efficiency. So, when PS Armor activates, Strike Rouge will turn into red and pink. The color scheme is also why it's named Rouge, meaning red in French. Since the color is red, which means Strike Rouge got the best defense. Not only Power Extender, Strike Rouge also equipped with Natural OS and AI support system. Ensure Kagali can pilot Strike Rouge easily without too much trouble, and AI support system is here to cover Kagali's inexperience too. For the armaments, Strike Rouge shared the same weapons with Strike Gundam and able to use Striker Packs too, which means Strike Rouge can use all the Striker that I mentioned before. After Uzumi Nala Asaha self-destruct himself with the country, Strike Rouge was sent to space with Kusanagi and assembled together after one month. At first, Kagali insisted to use IWSP as her MS striker pack. But this idea was denied because Kagali had very little piloting experience and she had to use AI support to control Strike Rouge. Even for ace pilots, IWSP is very hard to master. So for a noob like Kagali, IWSP is definitely not the right choice. The Air Striker was later chosen due to the practicality, although the upgrades were never listed clearly, but Orb upgraded the Air Striker and now is capable to fly in atmosphere or space freely. The Strike Rouge deployment was delayed due to the Striker change because the developers have to switch everything to fit Air Striker and Kagali's experience. By the time it was deployed, it's already the near end of the war, but Kagali did use the Strike Rouge to shot down some nukes, a few MS and later pulled Afran out from the Justice Gundam's nuclear explosion. In CE-73, Morogane finished the Utoli Striker and equipped onto the Strike Rouge. This Striker was in development since the CE-71 war, but it didn't finish in time like Strike Rouge due to technical issues. Utoli Striker is inspired by IWSP and combined with improved battery. Different than IWSP, Utoli Striker's structure was simplified and easy to repair, but it's still as powerful and versatile as IWSP. But compared to IWSP, Utori Striker can detach from the MS and fight as an independent fighter. It's not sure whether Utori Striker is as complicated as IWSP or not, because every time when Kagali used it, she didn't really fight. For the armaments, beam launcher on the right, railgun on the left, missile launchers on the shoulder, small missiles on the wings and large anti-ship sword. Kagali used the Strike Rouge Utoli a few times during the Destiny timeline, but every time when she showed up, she didn't fight and stood there to deliver a speech, trying to stop the meaningless war. The only time Strike Rouge Utoli got some performance is when Kira used it. The Spike Strike Rouge was already outdated, but Kira puts up a great fight before it was severely damaged. As the war kept going, Earth Alliance noticed that relying on Mobius and one Strike Gundam is not enough for Zaf's MS and four stolen Gundams. They decided to start their own mass production MS line too, since Strike Gundam is the only Gundam EA got. So based on the Strike's concept and design, Dagger was created. But EA needed something cheap and able to mass produce in the short time, so they simplified Dagger's design and Strike Dagger was born. Strike Dagger used the X100 frame just like Strike and Dagger to reduce cost and for easy production. Strike Dagger cannot use Striker Pack, but it can use Parachute Pack if needed. To further cut the cost, 
PS armor and EMP shielding were removed too. But after Battle of Panama, EMP shielding was equipped once again to avoid the same mistake. The weapons on Strike Dagger are standard, a single 75mm Seaweeze on the head, one ES-01 beam saber on the backpack, M703 57mm beam rival and a shield. Despite the weapons and features were very simple, but it's cheap and easy to mass produce a large group of them in a short time. Earth Alliance mass produced a lot of Strike Daggers and used MS Wave attack to turn the situation around. Although Strike Dagger provided Earth Alliance a chance to turn the battlefield around, but e EA still preferred the true mass production version of Strike. So, Dagger is the option that EA seek for and prefer the most. Since Strike Dagger was already taken, so this Dagger is also called 105 Dagger. Different than Strike Dagger, 105 Dagger can use Striker Pack and truly inherited Strike Gundam's features. 105 Dagger didn't equip PS armor but it was equipped with EMP shielding from the beginning. To ensure some defense, Laminator armor was added on vital areas. For the armaments, it was way better than just standard. A pair of 40mm seaweeds on the head, ES-01 beam saber on the side skirts, 12.5mm anti-infantry gun on the feet, 52mm machine gun, M703 57mm beam rifle, M703K beam carbine, and a shield. The 105 dagger and strike dagger was developed nearly at the same time, but 105 dagger was rolled out a bit late due to specified structure and parts. Including the prototypes and testing units, 23 of them were made during during CE-71 war and all of them were assigned to ace pilots. The most famous dagger is Gun Barrel Dagger, piloted by Moonlight Mad Dog Morgan Chevalier. Gun Barrel Dagger first appeared at Ptolemy's lunar base and fought against Canard Pars with his Hyperion Unit 1. Morgan was defeated and survived as prayer referee urging him to detach the Gun Barrel Striker. During Battle of Boaz, Morgan led a squad of strike daggers to clear the way for Peacemaker Force. During Second Battle of Yakindue, Morgan led a squad of seven daggers against a Jin High Maneuver type squad led by Dr. Michael Coast, and also fought a Gaze Experimental Firearms type, piloted by Hainan Western Flus. After the CE-71 war, Morgan was sent to kill Edward Harrison. He used the gun barrel pulse and immobilized Edward's radar full spec, causing Edward to drop into the gravity well. However, Morgan didn't take the killing shot because he believed that Edward would be dead for sure. But Edward miraculously survived. After this mission, Morgan was assigned with the new MA, Exus, as his new machine. Due to the expandability of 105 Dagger, there are more variations of it. Buster Dagger, and Dagger N and Slaughter Dagger. And Dagger N will be explained in Blitz Gundam's episode and I already explained Buster Dagger during Buster Gundam's episode. So let's move on to Phantom Pain's private MS, Slaughter Dagger. Slaughter Dagger is specifically used by Phantom Pain, which is why the OS performance and standards were different. First, the color scheme changed to black and gray, which fitted Phantom Pain's style perfectly. Secondly, Arrow Striker became part of the standard equipment. Phantom Pain further improved the Striker pack which resulted higher thruster output and able to fly in space or atmosphere. Also, Striker pack system was kept which means it can still use other packs if needed. Just like 105 Dagger, vital areas on the MS were covered by laminated armor. Slaughter Dagger shared the exact same armament like 105 Dagger except the rival. The MX-703G beam rival looked the same like 52mm machine gun, but it's a trial weapon to prove that shell and beam firing weapon can coexist on the same platform. Slaughter Dagger first appeared when the Martians came to Earth to check the situations and meet the representatives of all superpowers. Phantom Pain wanted to wipe out the Martians, so they insisted Orb to help them and gave them 5 Slaughter Daggers. The five slaughter daggers were equipped with L sword launcher, IWSP, and lightning striker. They met the Martians near Orb's territory and started an attack. But all five of them were defeated, and here is the order: Sword Slaughter was defeated by Nahi Herzl in his Gar shell. Launcher and lightning slaughter were defeated by Isaac Mao in his Kerberos Baku Hound. L slaughter was defeated by Ernst Brahe with his Delta Astray. IWSP slaughter was taken by Svenkalapaya after. 
after he tricked the pilot and let him crash into the ocean. Zuvin took the IWSP and retreated with his Strike E. Some time later, Slaughter Daggers appear again along with Strike Noir and used to complete a suppressing mission. When Phantom Pink attacked DSSD Space Station, Slaughter Daggers were deployed too. After the success of 105 Dagger and Strike Dagger, Earth Alliance started to work on the next generation mass production MS. Dagger L is the conclusion. The L in the name stands for Lightweight Clothing. First, Earth Alliance removed all the unnecessary equipment, which was why the laminated armor, thrusters on the shoulders and legs, and the 12.5mm anti-infantry gun on the feet were all removed. Secondly, striker pack system was kept so it's still versatile. For the weapons, a pair of M2 M5 12.5mm seaweeds on the head and chest, ES 04 B beam saber on the side skirts, MK 703 K beam carbine shield, MK315 Stiletto Rocket Propelled Anti-Armor Penetrator and MK39 No Recoil Cannon. Dagger L can equip the original Striker Packs or the newly made Striker Packs. The first one is called Doppelhorn Striker. This pack is designed for anti-ship battles. The only weapon on the pack is a pair of recoilless cannons. The second Striker is called Jet Striker. This pack derived from Air Striker and IWSP. It got great atmospheric flight ability and able to mount different mission specified equipment. The four pylons can equip Drash air to surface missiles, MK438 Triple Worker air to air missile pods, or MK1323 unguided missile pods. Dagger L is commonly used by Earth Alliance and Phantom Pain. EA is the bright color scheme and Phantom Pain is the darker color scheme. It was used in space or on Earth. In space, it participated the attack on Armory 1 and helped the Extenders to steal the Gundams. On Earth, it was part of EA's MS Force and launched with the Windoms. The final machine of the Dagger line, introducing Windom. Just like Dagger L, Windom is versatile and able to use Striker Pack for different situations. However, the connector was changed and only able to use the second generation Striker Pack, which include Doppelhorn, L, Multi, and Jack Striker. A quick FYI, Multi Striker is a pack with nuclear missiles or it can be different missiles. Windom is also a solution to Junius Treaty. The treaty limited both EA and Zaft MS and battleship numbers. So instead of modifying the existing designs, both sides chose to develop new generation MS with higher capabilities and that's the background of Windom. Different than Dagger L, the good old Vivin is back for enhanced communications. Multiple thrusters were added on the legs and shoulders which buffed Windom's standard mobility and speed, as well as better performance while in rough terrains. For overall performance, Windom is comparable or even surpassed Strike Gundam depending on this pilot, so this is definitely the pinnacle of Strike and Dagger line. Windom got the same weapons just like Dagger L, except the rifle and shield is different. The M9409L beam rifle is larger and more powerful than the beam carbine used by Dagger series. The shield is changed to A52 Offensive Shield Type E. The tip of the shield got sharp blades and able to use it as a close combat weapon. Other than that, there are two MK438B Dual Multipurpose Missiles Worger SA-10. In October CE-73, Windom was rolled out and became the new MS Force of Earth Alliance. Windom participated in multiple big battles. Although it seems weak on screen, but they still contribute a lot. One of the custom colored Windom is used by Neo Noaloku, which is Mula Flaga, but he lost his memories. His Windom is with Jet Striker and colored with purple. Another FYI, the Jet Striker on Neo's Windom is without limiters, which provided better thruster output and fly faster. Neo's Windom only deployed a few times, but Neo and his Windom is already capable of giving trouble to Zaf Aces like Afran Zara or Shinaska. In the Battle of Berlin, Neo did give a few good hits on the Freedom, but eventually Neo was shot down by Kira and captured by Art Angel. Thanks for watching Strike Gundam Episode Part 1. What do you think about Strike and Dagger Line? Tell me in the comments. For the Episode Part 2, Strike E, Strike Noir, and the rest of the squad will come. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell next to it so you will be notified when Part 2 comes out. Alright, I need some rest because reading a 5000 word script is pretty hard and the editing really burned my brain cells. Remember to subscribe to me and follow my IG at Severphonix. Donation link is in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.